Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about aromatase inhibitors. What are they? How do they work? And common side effects of the aromatase inhibitors. As you know from our other videos, and we'll link a couple below about the estrogen receptor and what it means for your treatment, if your tumor has estrogen and or progesterone receptors, it's stimulated to grow by estrogen and its metabolites. It's not caused by estrogen. If it were caused by estrogen, all of us who have estrogen would have breast cancer, but it basically furthers the growth and proliferation of breast cancer cells. There are a couple ways to block the estrogen receptors or to decrease the estrogen in our bodies. In tamoxifen, which we're not talking about much today, it actually sits in the estrogen receptor and it looks a little like estrogen to other tissues. The aromatase inhibitors work a completely different way. Anything that ends in ACE is an enzyme. So it's an aromatase, there's an enzyme called aromatase inhibitor. It inhibits the enzyme. What enzyme? Well, it's the enzyme that converts androgens, which we generally think of as male sex hormones, to estrogens. And again, it's the estrogen that can further the growth of breast cancer cells. Now, women and men, non-binary people, all have both androgens and estrogens. It's really the balance between the two that determines things like breast growth and other secondary sex characteristics. What we want to do with the aromatase inhibitors and the way they work is by blocking conversion of androgens to estrogen and that tissue where it does that is in fat, adrenal glands, and even breast tissue itself. So we have this enzyme that converts androgens to estrogen and the aromatase inhibitors or AIs block that enzyme. So unlike tamoxifen, which does not lower the level of estrogen in your body, the aromatase inhibitors actually do. Now you might be thinking, does that mean I'm going to have more androgen-like effects? And while we sometimes see a couple people in my practice, maybe you've noticed that their voices change. We don't see facial hair growth. We don't see voice changes and we don't see other um, changes that would indicate what we call virilization or looking more manly or feeling more manly. But the aromatase inhibitors by lowering estrogen in the body do have some negative side effects as well as the beneficial effects of basically shutting off estrogen to any remaining breast cancer cells in your body. The first one that I'm going to bring up is cardiovascular disease. So even after menopause, we still make plenty of estrogen in our body, though obviously it's lower when the ovaries stop working. But after the ovaries stop working, the um, estrogen in our body is good for our bones and it's good for our heart. And it's good for our heart probably because estrogen keeps cholesterol lower. So one thing you'll hear is that after people's ovaries stop working, they're at higher risk of heart disease. By taking an aromatase inhibitor, we actually see a slightly higher risk of things like stroke and cardiovascular disease than we see with tamoxifen. It's not a marked increase relative to the normal population, and there are things we can do about it. Being on an aromatase inhibitor lowers your healthy cholesterol, um, and so being on a cholesterol agent, lowering agent, would be something that would be offered to you. These have a lot of beneficial effects for all sorts of tissues in your body. So it's not, I, I guess, while you might view it as a burden to be on another medication, the benefits are going to outweigh the risks if your cholesterol is high. When you come off the aromatase inhibitor, you will see your cholesterol going back to baseline, and a lot of people can come off their cholesterol-lowering meds. The other thing we can see with the aromatase inhibitors related to the cardiovascular system is more people with high blood pressure, and that can obviously be treated, and you can go off the antihypertensives if your blood pressure goes back to normal, 
after you're off the aromatase inhibitor. So these are mostly reversible effects. The third thing I want to talk about is your bone health. So as I mentioned, even after our ovaries stop working, we have estrogen in our body that the aromatase inhibitors lowers pretty much to undetectable levels. And so that means that any estrogen that was getting to your bones no longer is. So thinning of the bones, osteopenia, which means light bones, and osteoporosis, which is more severe, where you're actually at higher risk of fracture, is something that we see on the aromatase inhibitors. One thing I do want to mention, and I know we've mentioned this in other videos when we talked about bone health, is that the aromatase inhibitors won't take somebody with a healthy bone mineral density and make them osteoporotic in the amount of time that you'll be on this medication, which could be up to five years. What it will do is go normal to low normal, or low normal to mild osteopenia, mild osteopenia to a little bit worse osteopenia, really bad osteopenia to mild osteoporosis. In other words, it just scooches the bone mineral density down. But we do see an increase in the risk of things like hip fractures in people on the aromatase inhibitors. So if you have a history of osteoporosis in your family, if you're on the lighter side and have other risk factors for osteoporosis, your doctor will make sure to check your bone mineral density and to put you on something to help strengthen your bone as well as the most important thing, which is weight-bearing exercise, like lifting weights, uh, running if you're able to, and just maintaining you know, a really fit lifestyle, again, if you're able to. For some people, these side effects of the aromatase inhibitors, these long-term side effects that mean they might be on another medication, are enough that they choose tamoxifen instead. So this is an option for you, although we now consider the aromatase inhibitors what we call first-line therapy. In a given person, in you, they might not be the absolute right best medication. So hearing this and learning about this can give you something to discuss with your doctor. Um, and again, as with the other side effects, bone health will go back to where it would have been, remembering that time has passed, so we all lose bone mineral density over time. But when you come off the aromatase inhibitors, your bone mineral density will go back to where it would have been. Calcium and vitamin D will be advised for you, and then there are medications both by mouth, by IV, and actually even an injection under the skin that you can get as well. And your primary care doctor, if you have one, a gynecologist, can help with monitoring your bone health as well as your cholesterol and heart health. I wanted to mention who takes aromatase inhibitors. There are two settings in which we use the drug. People with early stage disease who finish their surgery and if they're going to get a chemotherapy, aromatase inhibitors are prescribed either after, before, or in a combo, not at the same time, but with tamoxifen, so we can sequence them. And people with advanced disease, the aromatase inhibitors are first-line therapy for most people, along with other medications we'll cover in another video. So I've talked about who gets the aromatase inhibitors and some of the more serious, but not as bothersome side effects. What I'd like to talk about next are the bothersome side effects. These are the ones you're gonna notice every day. Because we've lowered estrogen in your body, people will have hot flashes or uh, hot flushes, sometimes they're called, or night sweats. You might notice that you're more likely to be hot during the day. Um, if that's terribly bothersome to you, you can, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll talk about what you can do if you're having side effects. Another side effect that the aromatase inhibitors are really famous for is joint aches and pains. Those are called arthralgias. It's not arthritis. It's not inflammation of the joints, but it's pain in the joints. And I've had people tell me that they feel like they're 90 years old when they first go on the medication. It takes about three months for these side effects to kick in or up to three months, but uh, if it's a feeling of, of stiffness in the hands, in the feet, in the knees, 
I did have one 90 year old tell me she felt like she was 90 years old and I pointed out she was 90 years old and she said but she hadn't felt that way before. If you notice stiffness and it hasn't occurred to you, it might be from the aromatase inhibitors, it is, if you didn't have it before. And if you have arthritis, the aromatase inhibitors shouldn't make it worse. It does not look like that's a risk factor for worse joint pain. Some people get muscle pains, so you can feel uh, pain in your thighs or bone pain in the thighs. And uh, that's something to talk to your medical team about. Of course, we all worry, what does this mean about my breast cancer? But it's very likely to be from the aromatase inhibitors. Very rarely, the aromatase inhibitors can cause shortness of breath. This is really quite uncommon. I've seen it in two people out of the probably a thousand people I've treated with aromatase inhibitors. So not that common, but important. Now I'm gonna switch briefly and tell you what to do if you have side effects. If the aromatase inhibitors are the choice therapy for you, for example, you've already been on tamoxifen and either didn't tolerate it or your cancer got worse, you are going to be offered, most likely, something we call a washout period, where you come off your aromatase inhibitor for a couple weeks and then switch to another one. There are three aromatase inhibitors, letrozole and nastrozole, and exomestane, and they're all equally effective. So if you switch from letrozole to exomestane, you're not giving up any benefit, but you may be giving up some side effects. Or if you start on anastrozole and switch to letrozole, same thing. You may notice those side effects got so much better, including shortness of breath and aches and pains and hot flashes and the sleep problems that come with it. And you're receiving a drug that works the same way. So we don't really know why switching would help. When we've had only one aromatase inhibitor, some people would come off the medicine, have a couple week washout period, start back on the same one, and actually feel much better. So it's something to try before you give up on the aromatase inhibitors altogether, unless you have one of the reasons to switch to tamoxifen. I have covered a lot. I haven't even covered all the other side effects. We'll have a blog post about the side effects, the other side effects of the aromatase inhibitors, which are really important, but not the key ones I want you to take away from this video. If this video has been helpful to you, click like and subscribe, and as always, drop a comment below and we'll get back to you.